Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, clear. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I just start. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Shi Chen Shi from National Chengdu yeah, University. Please. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Well. Yeah. And the topic of uh, this uh, presentation is uh, sell us a gift from nature. Okay. Okay. In the first part, I would like to introduce myself. Yeah, here is the working experience uh, of me and education. And uh, now I'm working in the uh, mechanical engineering department in National Chengdu University. And before that, I'm working in the, you know, self, uh, uh, Health owned by the government uh, companies, Metal Industrial Research and Development Center. I think uh, CG may know this company. And before that, I have two years working experience in the biotechnology as a salesman. Okay. And my first job is in, oh, sorry, I think I can use this. This. Yeah. The first job of me is the, I work in the Everlight, that is the, you know, the first, a uh, uh, biggest the LED man manufacturing company in Taiwan. Yep. And uh, education um, experience is that I get the PhD from material science and engineering in Chaotong University, Taiwan. So I'm still, I, I'm very interested in the material uh, development, just like you. And I got the master and bachelor degree in mechanical engineering department in NCKU. And uh, I think uh, two things is very interesting to me. First, that uh, I always told the others I'm the mechanical guy with the material heart. So I always uh, thinking about uh, me. Can we do something to have a new material for the future? Yeah, so that's the one thing. And another thing is that uh, I started from the mechanical engineering part. And after that the long big circle, I go back to the mechanical engineering part department. This is, uh, uh, you know, this is my home. So I like this job very much and like this uh, university, this, impart this department, okay? And next, uh, next, next. Okay, this is my research interesting. My lab is called Advanced the Material and Process Lab, MPL. And this is uh, what the material, what we have here. And this is the uh, process that we are, uh, that I'm very interested in. Here today, the topic is the cell loss and uh, Based on this cellulose, we have the cellulose nano crystallized cellulose or net, uh, cellulose nano fiber. It's a different shape. Okay. And after that, we have some functionalized uh, CNC. We code it di dihydrate CNC. And we have some uh, modification for the self antibacterial CNCs. And then today we will introduce a, just a little bit about the graphene that's done by the um, cellulose. So in our lab, we, we have the graphene and the graphene constant dot. And of course, we just, uh, we try to uh, functionalize this uh, graphene constant dot, carbon, carbon lecithin, graphene constant dot, or I mean functionalized graphene constant dots. And at the end of this topic, I will introduce the titles a little bit. And it's, a, it's another gift from the nature. And we have some functionalized titles like cartids and emetics. And I will introduce this later. And also I'm very interested in the ceramic material and also some nano uh, structures. And here is the process. Uh, I'm working on the fresh welding. This is a very traditional uh, manufacturing process. 
and of course the punching and the cold isostatic um, pressing for the ceramic and the PM casting and the atmospheric plasma process and the thermal CVD. Okay, so this is why we, uh, this is the logo of my uh, lab. This is NCKU and this is the name of my lab. The most important things is these two leaves. That's the originate from my, uh, I create this uh, lab because I want to uh, make the material and process more green and more efficient, okay? Okay, sorry. This is the uh, DACNC, the aldehyde uh, CNCs. This uh, uh, duck one, duck one is the uh, functional group. So you can see a lot of functional group on the uh, cell loss. Uh, this is cell loss and this is a functional group. Okay, since I'm graduated from the material science department, I just uh, direct go to the um, manufacturing industrial. And at that time, uh, it's a very interesting work that have been done. I'm the professional lighting application department in the company. And why it could the professional lighting? You know, the uh, most of the lighting is just for the people. You know, indoor lighting, just like a light bulb or outdoor lighting, just like a light street, light lamp in the street. But my department is working on the professional one. What, what do you mean by professional? It, the, the light is uh, designed for the plants and animals. So at that time, I published uh, some uh, articles like this LED application in horticulture uh, and in agriculture. So I think that's a career turnaround of me because at that time, I'm thinking about uh, how can we do to rest the plant well. And after that, I think uh, this is what we've done at that time. We just uh, trying to design the um, artificial life for growing plants like this. So we call it a plant factory. And at that time, we have a lot of chance to um, observe or to monitor the growth of the plant. Actually, it's uh, so amazing. Um, and uh, and we know that the plant is so unique and so treasure, but uh, it's so uh, weak. It's very e uh, easy to damage it, including the, 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 the environment, including the nutrition. You can have a lot of influence on the growth of the plant. So at that time, I'm thinking about, uh, yeah, maybe we can do something. So let's go back to our earth. Actually, we are very lucky. We live in the, this sort of magic uh, planet. Uh, we, we don't, the, plan, the, the earth is not uh, uh, in distance too much or too less to, to the sun. So we can keep this uh, you know, colorful uh, planet. We got the white cloud, we got the blue sea and the green and deep dark uh, land. And this is the moon, okay? So we, we are very, very lucky to live in this uh, wonderful place like uh, this. We have water, we have so many plants, we have land, we have sea, we have water, we have sun, we have cloud and everything seems to be very good and that's that's the, the the one gift from god so we have to think about how to preserve it how to make it uh, better right okay i don't know if we can uh have a um video or not because of the internet but i still want to share this uh, to the 
uh, listeners. But if you cannot, uh, sorry, if the video delayed because of the internet, and you can, I just want to share some, um, okay, where I can, you can go to the, okay, here. You can go to the YouTube and type man versus earth. You can go to the YouTube and uh, type the man versus earth and you can see this video. Okay. So I just try to share this. Fun fact. Planet it's not okay for the video. Years old. Mankind, the speed about one hundred forty thousand years old. Let me put that in perspective. If yes, okay, Professor. It's clear. Four hours. That's one full day that we have been here on this planet for. Drum roll, please. Three seconds. Three seconds. And look what we've done. We have modestly named ourselves Homo sapiens, meaning wise man. But is man really so wise? Smart, yes, it is good to be smart, but not too smart for your own good. <laughs> yes, we have split the atom. Yes, we build clever machines that navigate the universe in search of new homes. But at the same time, those atoms we split created nuclear warfare. And our quest to explore the galaxy rejects and neglects the home that we have here now. So no, that cannot be wisdom. Wisdom is different. While intelligence speaks, wisdom listens. We willingly covered our ears to Mother Nature's screams and closed our eyes to all of her help wanted signs. Wisdom knows that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if we were wise, we would not be shocked if we see storms that are stronger than ever before, or more drought, hurricanes, and wildfire than ever before, because there's more pollution than ever before, more carbon, more trees cut down than ever before. At a record pace, we have increased the extinction of animals by 1,000 times the normal rate. What a few in the next 10 to 100 years, every beloved animal character in every children's book is predicted to go extinct. Lions gone, rhinos gone, tiger, gorilla, elephant, polar bear gone. In three seconds. Species that have been here longer than us will be gone because of us. In this three seconds. In an existence shorter than a Vine video, we turn the circle of life into our own personal conveyor belt. Somebody, anybody, help. We've given so much the only planet in the solar system of life. I mean, we are one in a million. No, actually, scientists. Specifically, we are one in a billion, a trillion, a trillion. That's a one to call about 33 zeros. And I don't want to get too spiritual, but how are we not a miracle? We are perfectly positioned to the sun so we don't burn, but not too distant so we don't turn to ice. Go to like said in face. We are just like this paradise where we are given medicine for trees, not coincidence. To lead, but because like the song says, we are family, literally everything, every species is connected genetically from the sunflower to the sunfish, and this is what we must recognize before it's too late, because the real crisis is not global warming, environmental destruction, or animal agriculture, it's us, these problems are symptoms of us, byproducts of us, our inner reflection, loss of connection has created this misdirection, we have forgotten that everything contributes to the perfection of Mother Nature, corporations keep us unaware, disconnected, but they have underestimated our strength. Contrary to popular belief, millions are waking up out of their sleep, seeing our home being taken right from under our feet. We cannot allow our history to be written by the wicked, greedy, and it is our duty to protect Mother Nature from those who refuse to see her beauty. Call me crazy, but I believe we should have the right to eat food and safe with the creed. We can pronounce drinking water that is clean, marvel at trees, breathe in air free of toxins. These are natural rights, not things that can be bargained for in Congress. See, they want you to feel powerless, but it's been said that something as small as the flutter of a butterfly's wing can cause a typhoon halfway around the world. But when enough people come together, we too will make waves and watch the world into a new era. Love and connection, freedom for all, without oppression. But it is up to you. Yes, you watch this behind this screen to make the effort because time is of the essence and only together can we make it to the fourth second. Yes. Fun fact. Planet Earth.
Is that okay for the video? Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. So this is the um, U United Nations environmental um, program. It just lists the 21st uh, issue for the 21st century. So here I just uh, um, share with four. I think that's most important. Yes, that is the temperature rise and water pollution, deforestation and urbanization. I think that is the four uh, emerging uh, environmental issue we are facing right now. Okay, for the first one is temperature rise. The, right now, someone says that the temperature, uh, the Earth is just like a uh, under um, burning, just like this. Everything uh, become hot. Every place becoming hot. And if that okay, um, I just uh, share this. Degrees is the target for limiting the global temperature increase. But if greenhouse gas emissions were now, temperatures would still rise by up to one degree Celsius. Six thousand years ago, temperatures were at this level, and America's Midwest was a desert. World's food production centers will become barren again. This future mountains lose their glaciers and rivers vanish. The Indian subcontinent fighting for survival. A single degree temperature increase could eliminate fresh water for a third of the planet in 85 years. Warming at the poles happens faster than the global average. 40% of Arctic sea ice has disappeared in the last 30 years. While ice reflects heat, motions to absorb it. So if ice melts, the process becomes self-reinforcing. Or ocean surface means more heat is absorbed, which raises temperatures, making ice less likely to reform. Mountainous regions are at greater risk of landslides as the permafrost, which held them together for thousands of years, melts away. Though my countries like the Maldives are submerged as sea levels rise, the countries already hit by hurricanes face ever greater storms. At a two degree rise, people begin to die in what are now considered normal summers. 2003, with temperatures 2.3 degrees above average, 52,000 people died across Europe. Plant growth slows down, then stops. They don't absorb carbon dioxide sufficiently, instead, emitting it. The extra carbon sees global warming spiral out of control. 125,000 years ago, when temperatures were two degrees higher, sea levels were up by six meters. Today, that extra water makes up our polar ice, which is melting. In 2100, sea levels could rise by a meter, displacing 10% of the world's population. In this two degree future, ecosystems across the globe collapse, the species migrate and fall out of sync. A third of all life on Earth faces extinction. Scientists say we can still avoid a two degree rise if we limit our carbon emissions to no more than 2.9 trillion tons. But if it's 1.9 trillion tons, we have one trillion left to use between now and forever. Current rate, we will use it in just 21 minutes. Okay, I think I can stop here. Two degrees. I'm sorry. Yeah. And the second uh, critical issue is that the uh, water pollution. This is the the, uh, the image that the, you know, here is the sea turtle just uh, eating the plastic. I think the uh, water pollution is uh, uh, a lot of uh, aspect of uh, uh, point of view to, to solve it. But uh, here I want to say something about the plastic. Yes, we draw a lot of plastic into the water and then uh, the water will contaminate our uh, water system. So this is very uh, difficult uh, and a very dangerous uh, situation. And I think I just skipped this movie because uh, this movie is uh, just a, it's a, a very long movie. And if we have time, we just come back and see this movie. And the next one is deforestation. Yes, because we have to leave 
we have the we have to have some place to live. So we just uh, uh, cut out the, the the trees and burn it just like this. Is yeah, this very tragedy. And uh, as, uh, also, I will skip this um, video. If we have time, we go back and and share. And the fourth one is the uh, urbanization. You know, people uh, just uh, live in the big city. It, it's uh, crowded. This photo, this image is the uh, MRT system in Taipei. Uh, people always crowded because they just uh, they want to live in the big city. And uh, actually, live in the big city is not a problem. But uh, before that, we we. Normally, we just broke the broken the the environment, and then especially for the nowadays uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, people just uh, uh, go crowded. You will have very bad effect to the uh, to our earth uh, health because the uh, the virus will uh, spread it because of the crowded uh, people. Yes. Okay. So. I think uh, it's uh, time for us to think about maybe we can do something, especially we are the professional one. We are the scientists, we are the lecturer, we are the uh, research and development guy. And uh, yeah, maybe we can think something, we can do something, we can have something to uh, make this uh, world better. Yeah, so we just look around in our daily life. We live we well, what we eat and what we have in the transportation. All of these things uh, need uh, resources like uh, metal, like a polymer, like a, a ceramic. And actually this uh, uh, material resource is just coming from the earth like this. I think, uh, uh, um, your department is the material and uh, metallurgical science department. So maybe you, you know this uh, phenomenon better than I am. But uh, the point is that uh, can we th think that uh, maybe we should not uh, always dig in to the earth to have some resource Maybe we can think about how, what is the, oh, sorry, um, I think uh, I think you should do this. Not just to dig in the earth because you, you will hurt the earth and actually pants. And can we think something that, uh, you know, how about this green things? This is the trees, this is the plants. And actually this uh, resource is not, uh, is recyclable and is uh, always, have then if we have some and water. So can we just th think something that, can we use this uh, uh, plan? Can we use this gift from the, from the God that uh, it can help us to solve the problem, especially for our daily life? Okay, here's the outline. I've brief briefly introduced the uh, environmental crisis in the 20 uh, in the last uh, 20 minutes and now we want to go to the next that is the nature's gift okay before that uh, here is the taiwan here and this is a uh, national chenggong university in the guangfu campus here is the, the Institute of Technology, Sapuro, November, and that's your school. And we have uh, 3,500 3, kilometers in distance. So it's not far. If, I, if, if possible, I would like to visit to your, your, your institute. Yeah. Okay, here's the Taiwan. It's very small one because we only have the 9.1% of the uh, land area uh, compared to the Indonesia. And for the population, we only have 8.5% of Indonesia. So we are very small 
uh, country, but uh, actually it looks very beautiful. Here's the Taiwan, and you can see that uh, uh, here is a green, uh, dark green. Here is the mountain, and this mountain is uh, uh, down by the collapse of two plates. It's a Eurasian plate and the Philippine Sea plate. So this uh, um, place is near here. So this is a uh, uh, Asia only one uh, tourist spot you can visit. You can see the two plates at the same time. So we can walk from the Philippine Sea plate to the Eurasian plate. Yeah, in Hualien here. Tainan is over here. Okay, and this is the. Uh, um, Benang tree is a great symbol of uh, National Chenggong University. We're located here. And you can see that here is the green, uh, dark green. It's a forest, it's a mountain. And, uh, and this is a, a green place is the uh, place that we, we live and we found. And a very small part here. Okay, so what do we have here? Okay, here I want to share one video because this is very important. This is the movie about Taiwan. Yeah, this is the lake in the mountains. This is the Turtle Island. And we have a very high mountain because of the collapse of two plates. Sorry, I should I forget to share this the sound. The biodiversity is perfect here. You have a deer, you have clean, a very beautiful shell. Yeah, so Taiwan welcome you. <laughs> okay, this is the the fallen of Taiwan. I uh, we have seen this in the video. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah. 
So actually, we have a very good fund lens here. We just uh, walk and leave with the fund. And actually, um, the most, uh, uh, the biggest uh, uh, public product is the rice. Sorry, okay. What happened? Sorry, what happened? Okay, there is some noise in the background. I'm sorry, Professor C. Okay, okay. So okay. I just uh, keep continuing. Yes, continue, yeah. Okay. So Taiwan is a very good fund land. And uh, um, the, the biggest uh, product, the, the biggest product is the rice. So at the rice uh, harvest, so what the, the rice straw is for the forage only, and uh, maybe for the artists. This is me, and this is the uh, artist walk done by the uh, rice straw. And it's only for the straw mats. Of course not. Maybe we can see, uh, we can have some plan to make this rice straw and then husk uh, more uh, valuable. So you know that uh, there's 50%, 50-50% uh, of the rice and uh, the rest of the rice of the rice straw. So after a uh, harvest, uh, the 50% of the treasure, we just uh, thrown it away. That is what the waste. So maybe we can see some, we can do something to make this uh, rice straw and husk more uh, valuable. Okay, so that, uh, Let's go to the uh, next part is called the cell loss. Okay, the plants like, uh, you know, trees, flowers, grass, bamboo, um, banana, or some, some plants, we call it the lignin cell loss plants. Here we take the rice trough, for instance, the, the rice straw is uh, composed of the semicellulose and cellulose and lignin. The uh, hemicellulose, sorry, I think uh, I can do this. Use this. The hemicellulose is uh, composed of uh, acetic acid, xylose, aerobinose, and cellulose is composed of uh, glucose, and lignin is the phenolic compound. It's this, this structure is the same with the petroleum based uh, material. Some we just uh, um, extracted from the uh, petroleum. Okay. And uh, it's very common, you know, daily life. So this, uh, we always use in the, in this scale, in the centimeter scale, we use the woods or the plants, uh, just like uh, for the uh, doing the uh, like a desk or a chair, something. And uh, if we just uh, narrow down the size to the cell loss microstructure like this, this is the the, the main role of the uh, today's present uh, topic. And we keep uh, narrow down, you will be go to the cell loss molecule and uh, even smaller, it will to be the, the basic structure, we call it sugar unit, that is the cell, loss. Uh, that is the glucose. And here is the image. If you narrow down the size, you will becoming more thin and more pure. And this is the structure of the cell loss. Uh, basic structures over here, you can see the six carbon structure, one, two, six, three, four, five, six, six carbon structure. And it has some intermolecular hydrogen bonding here, intermolecular hydrogen bonding. And this, and uh, the yellow line is the intramolecular hydrogen bonding. And this hydrogen bonding make the uh, cellulose strong, okay? And then in this uh, green circle, 
uh, sorry, in, the, in this green parts, uh, here's the basic unit of the uh, cell loss. So the basic unit of cell loss is looking like this, or you can uh, display it in, in this way, okay? Okay, so what is this? Actually, I was told that the, in the in the previous uh, slides, this is what we call the glucose, and we can call it hexosis or aldosis. Is the uh, basic unit of this cell loss, and actually, is the uh, sometimes in the biochemistry we call it the monosaccharide. And if we combine two glucose, what will happen? You see the uh, carbon oxide here. Ah, no, no carbon oxide. It's the uh, uh, OH over here, it's OH over here. And <clears throat> if we want to combine these two glucose, we'll do, and we'll do the dehydration reaction. We just get rid of one water here. And what it will be, it will be like this. We just combine two uh, glucose monosaccharide and become a, 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 this structure. And what is this? This is what we call the maltose. It's an ingredient in brewing wines. Okay, so we we if we wanna uh, if you are like to drink beer, you. You, you eat a lot of maltose. And what if we just combine glucose and fructose together? Glucose is one kind of monosaccharide and the fructose is another type of uh, monosaccharide. And we do the hydration, the same uh, reaction, dehydration reaction like this. And we can have these one. That's what we called sucrose. This is the uh, main product of photosynthesis. And this is the main form of uh, plant to accumulate and transportation of uh, energy. Okay. How about this? If we combine one glucose and one galactose. Galactose is uh, another type of monosaccharide. OH over here, hydroxide group here, and hydroxide up here. So you know that if we want to combine these two, this bonding will be different like a before one. So it has a beta bonding type. So what kind of this structure codes is this structure called the lactose. Um, this will help to your uh, insta time because it, this uh, um, this material will help the material grows in your insta in time, and you will feel better. And you will feel good. Okay. Okay. How about if you want to use this uh, uh, material? How can we use that? Here we check the sucrose for example. So we just add one water inside and you can have the, this two thing, two a basic unit material. One is for glucose and one is for fructose. And this uh, uh, process we call the hydrolation. So we just add one, uh, unit of water inside. So you can decompose this uh, structure into two basic units. So that's the idea. So this is uh, the idea of the very beginning one. So we just uh, introduced the uh, right straw in, into the circle and we do the, the lignification and we, could, we can have the cell loss. You know that the cell loss is a very long chain with the uh, 
crystalline part and the non-crystalline part. But how can we use this? So we do the hydrolysis process to make it uh, decompose, to make the cellulose decompose into the glucose. And this glucose, we can have the, another application and another um, uh, resources for the um, new materials and we will introduce it later. Okay, so we are very uh, working hard to to make this rice straw uh, valuable. The first stage, we get the cellulose already. And this is, uh, if you are interested in how to make the rice straw to become a, a cellulose in a very green way, you can have this reference. This is my uh, paper published this year. Actually, it's just uh, uh, one month ago, before. And uh, that's the uh, way we are trying to to make it is trying to uh, make the you know the process more green. So in this uh, paper, we just extract the cell loss from the rice straw using the chlorine free bleaching process because uh, most of the uh, extraction process are using chlorine uh, compound inside. And this chlorine will have a very serious damage to our earth. Uh, yes, so we have uh, success for uh, demonstrate this uh, process. And actually it's, uh, um, you know, it's the uh, product is very good like this. So we have lots and lots of uh, high quality cellulose. See, yes. And actually this uh, cellulose has some unique, unique properties I will show you later. Before that, I want to have some interaction with the student, maybe later, right? Because we have uh, another 30 minutes. So I just skipped this part, okay? And maybe end of the uh, presentation, we just go back to uh, this, uh, this unique property, is that okay? Hey. Yes. Okay, so I right. just uh, jump to the jump, 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 jump. Okay, the point is that um, I want to show you that uh, here is the meadow here. If you check the uh, uh, x-axis as the specific, specific strengths, that is the uh, ultimate tensile stress divided by density. Here, we just uh, call it a uh, specific uh, stiffness. It's a uh, definition is stiffness divided by density. So if we just plot this part, uh, the, this figure, here is the uh, steel carbon steel, and here is the aluminum. So do you know where is the cell loss? Yeah, it's over here. So actually it's a really strong one and stiffness one. So that's the unique properties of the cell loss. Okay, here's the applications. Before you want to uh, use it, you have to make it, right? So the first uh, process is the parping. So we introduce the rice straw in the process and uh, have a um, chlorine free, free the bridging process. And then we can have the cellulose nanocrystal. We call it a CNC or na cellulose nanofiber. So what's the difference between them? Here is the cell loss in the micrometer scale. Actually, the cell loss is combined with the the green, uh, the blue one is the we call it the crystalline region, and this yellow and the red dot part is the non-crystalline uh, region. So the CNC is only the blue part is the crystalline the 
uh, structure. So we call it uh, cellulose nanocrystal. Uh, but for the CNC, it's looking like this. Actually, it's the combined with the crystalline, non-crystalline, crystalline, and non-crystalline structure. So the CNC will be smaller. Sorry, it's uh, actually it's uh, uh, shorter because it, it just only uh, the crystalline parts. The CNC is uh, uh, with the same diameter with the CNCs, but it's longer lens. Uh, after popping the material, after popping, we go to different uh, uh, process. We can have the CNCs. You can have the CNF. If you are interested in this, uh, you can check the, the cellulose uh, paper we published this year. Okay, this is what it looked like. The CNC is the uh, 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 diameter is the same with the CNF, but it's shorter. The CNF is longer. So actually, you have the different uh, application uh, uh, fields. Okay, because of this uh, cell loss have the superior property like a low density, sorry, low, uh -huh, low density, low thermal expansion coefficient, high transparency, like this, this is my boy. And this is the uh, PNA we met, including 3% uh, uh, CNC inside, but it still look like uh, very transparent. And actually it's non-toxicity, reunibility, and the biodegradability and the surface modified possibility. So yeah, because of the uh, property with the low density, low thermal expansion coefficient, high transparency. So sometimes you will apply the sulfida or a solid lubricant to the uh, uh, material, uh, composite material. And for the uh, non-toxicity, reunibility, biodegradability, and easy surface modification. So normally you can use as a carrier or template for the nano um, size the uh, material application. Uh, we, we will introduce a little bit just uh, uh, later. Yeah. Okay. So normally you use as a feeder or a carrier. Yes. If cellulose as a filler in our lab, this is what we've done. We can have a very high toughness uh, acrylic because acrylic is the uh, strength is good, but transparency UV re resistance is not good. And uh, sorry, uh, strength, transparency, and UV resistance is good, but the uh, brittleness is, is the drawback of this material. So we want to have some work to keep the transparency and keep the uh, improving the UV resistance, but uh, also increase the uh, toughness. So here we just add uh, some uh, CNC into the PMA. We can have the transparency is still good, and uh, we can have a very good toughness aggregate. So it means that the CNC is. Uh, uh, Servers a uh, feeler will be very good in the um, uh, toughness increase, uh, inc uh, improvement of acrylic. And, and uh, the second example is that cellulose uh, as a feeler, we can have a high anti well dental base. So, dental, this, uh, dental base is over here, it's normally used uh, acrylic uh, material to, to do that. Uh, Acre have a good strength, but it's very bad because it's so brittle. So the rail resistance is really bad. So in this case, we just add the CNC into the um, PMA. So we can see the wheel volume will dramatically decrease 966%. And uh, slightly decrease the uh, coefficient of friction. Yeah. Okay. 
And the third example is cell loss as a carrier. Here we just doing we, we use the CNC as a, a type bacterial coating because the the, the this uh, paper this uh, paper bag we normally use to um, protect the foot, but the, actually this this uh, paper did not have the enough strength or gas barrier or antibacterial property. So we use the cell loss as a template uh, to modify the functional group of this surface. Here, we just add the photosensitizer into the uh, CNC surface. And after shining the light, this photosensitizer will uh, have some RS. This RS will keep uh, will kill the material. And uh, actually, for adding the CNC into the the paper, the strengths here we use the bursting strengths uh, will be increased twenty two percent. And how about the air permeability? is down to only 2% of the original paper. This. It's material observed in the, in the surface of the paper. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the three example of the um, cell loss as a filler or template. So can we go just further? Yes, we introduce the right straw here and we do the, the lignification process. We got the cell loss and we do the hydrolysis. We got the glucose. And then we try to use this glucose as a template. We do the hydrothermal process. We can get the graphene from the dots. So let's see next. Yeah, this is the uh, how we make the graphene content dot. There are two major ways. One is the top down, one is the bottom up. So here we just uh, use the uh, the glucose does hydrolysis from the cell loss and by the and process by the hydrothermal uh, process, and we can have the graphene content dot. And because of the uh, graphene content is done by the glucose, so it's so nearly non-toxicity like this. So the cell viability is really high, even in the very high dose and for a very long time, two days. It's a viability is nearly one. So this is a very good uh, material or template for the uh, bio. Uh, application and then we we'll, this is the what we want to do for the next time and this is a gqd's application you can use in the biological image you can use in the medicine or optics or energy so this is very good uh, 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 material nano material and actually it's a it's a is coming from the right straw. Can you image that? Okay, let's go further. Actually, in the process of, of the liquefaction, we have the lignin. So can we have this lignin? Because we know that the lignin is the phenolic uh, compound. And this structure is, uh, is uh, just like the material with, get it from the petroleum or uh, oil. And actually we can have this uh, in the right straw. So what can we do? This is the lignin process. So we follow in this process and eventually we can have the uh, lignin. And lignin can be used uh, as an additive as a carbon fiber, bioplastic, or biofuel or some resin. 
And this is a very good uh, uh, material for our daily life. And the most important part, this uh, we can have the lignin from the um, rice straw, not from the oil. I think that's the most uh, attractive part of this uh, uh, research. And then we have a new partner come inside. Here is the, do you know what is this? I think everyone has know about this. This is the CNC, or we can call it the cell loss. And how about this? It looks very similar, right? We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six carbon. And we have uh, one to four glycic bonding from another six carbon structure. Yeah, it looks very similar, but the only difference in the, oh, sorry. But only uh, the different parts is only at the, uh, the structure in the uh, second carbon. Here we have the, different uh, nitrogen group, functional group in the uh, carbon number two. Here is the same. So it's very look, uh, similar. So what is this? This is the cheating, yes. Actually it's the broader. <laughs> the structure is very similar. Oh, sorry. Actually it's a, uh, we have another circle. We have a carapaz here. And we made some process to have the cheating. And then we modify it as a chitosan. And the chitosan has the, the properties of easy accessibility, biocompatibility, non-toxicity, and the biological activity. And it can be used in the, apply in the biomedical application, agriculture, or wastewater treatment and food technology. So finally, is the uh, research result of my lab. We use the chitosan from the carapace to do the water, uh, wastewater treatment. Here, we just uh, trying to uh, absorb the copper in the wastewater. So we do the surface modification into two different structure. One is a carson, the one is a uh, emission. C A R C T S and M A M I C T S. It look like this. We deposit on the a uh, filler filter, and after that we can have uh, much uh, uh, copper on the filled paper. So we can absorb more copper in the waste water by chitosan uh, involved it. And another experiment is we're trying to make the biomedical application as a hemodialysis membranes. We're trying to replace these membranes by the chitosan. Yeah. After some modification, we can increase 80% of uh, urea reduction rate ratio, 80%. So that's amazing progress. Okay, so the next story is that uh, actually we have the rice straw. It's a natural uh, material. And we have a carol base. It's another uh, natural uh, material. So we have, we're trying to make to it connected together. <clears throat> so next time we will show you the chitos and graphene content dots. Uh, composite as a feeder and as a uh, carrier as well. Yeah. Okay, this is a final one. The conclusion is that we have to face the environmental crisis. So here we introduce actually two natural material. One is cellulose, one is a uh, chitosan. And this two material, uh, Will be, uh, we will try to make it, uh, you know, uh, productization to the, uh, to the 
to the market because it's a really good uh, properties. Okay. And thank you for your listening. Sorry, I've just uh, five more minutes. This is my group and this is me. And uh, my legacy for collaboration, even for the advanced material, like a carbon ceramic or copper, or the uh, basic uh, manufacturing process like welding plasma or spray. Okay, here's this the sub two project, final one I want to share with you. And uh, I uh, invited uh, you to join this sub two project. Yeah. Maybe we can uh, visit uh, together next year. Yeah, this is the sub two project I have this year. It's a cell loss situation from the nature. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Professor Xi. That was an amazing lecture. And please give applause, virtual applause for Professor Xi. Sorry, Pardon? Uh, virtual applause. Reaction. Sorry. Uh, I, it, I'm sorry. I, I, I can hear my voice. Yeah, but it's not uh, complete. So, how about now? Test, test. Is it? Yeah. No. I don't know. It's not. Uh, it's not. Not clear. Sometimes you are broken. Okay, so please wait. Hmm. Maybe my internet is not good. Yeah, we are sorry for that. So now yeah. is it better? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, great. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Shi, for the amazing lecture. And we can tell that your research is very unique and very uh, outstanding research because you give us a new perspective that uh, uh, materials and mechanical engineering in the nature. Thank you very much. Yeah. And now we open the floor for the question and answer for the students and lecturer here that happen to be attending this uh, webinar. Also can have uh, the question and I'm sure Professor Xi will entertain you with the good answer. Mm -hmm. Is there any questions? Yes. You can either raise your hand or just type your question in the chat room. Dr. Azza, may I initiate the discussion? Yeah, of course, please. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Proche. Yes. <laughs> okay, but right, wait. Let, I, I trying to get the image. I don't know what's the Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. I can see you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's me. <laughs> I turn off my camera. Okay. Okay. No problem. <laughs> so, okay. Keep continue. Okay. Uh, look at the Taiwan yeah, island. Yeah. You know, they are, um, I think it is. Uh, compared to, you know, Java Island, maybe it is a one, two, third, one third, right? Yeah, it's very ah. small. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's very small. Yeah, that, that, that's given from God, <laughs> however. Yeah. Okay, uh, what about the ratio of the land productions for agriculture to the, how to say, the building area? So, so we can estimate how many percents of the, for example, cellulose produced by the agriculture product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what, what is the ratio of the, the land area of this? Sorry, I don't get- how, how, many percent, how many percent agriculture area to the building area? Oh, you mean the, you want to ask the, the um, Area yeah, 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 area, yeah, 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 yeah,
population don't have there. That, uh, information, but I think only maybe 10 percent. Oh, only 10 percent. Yeah, okay. because you can see that uh, Taiwan, uh, this, this, uh, okay, let me show you this. I don't know what I, I can show you this or not. Okay. Because, because Taiwan is, uh, you know, that I, what I introduced to you, the Taiwan mm -hmm. is the collapse of two plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because most of the parts, I think one is health. Fifty percent of the land is is the mountain, so we can have the the we can have uh, have the rice in that mountain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the area is a, a flat area is so small, mm -hmm. but uh, this small area we still have uh, to live. So I think uh, maybe one ten percent of the land area that's mm. uh, for the farming in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's if, not small. It's it's very small one. Yeah. Um. So if uh, we are taking the data more specifically to the rice productions. Yes. Is it? It is also very small, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's why I think. Uh, if compared to Indonesia islands, we have a very huge uh, farm area. So yes. we can produce many, many um, uh, cellulose. <laughs> yes. Okay. You yeah. should do that. You should yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, last month, eh, two, two months or three months ago, you remember uh, reminded me to uh, related to Satu. Satu program. Yeah. yeah, I have. Uh, I have told to the our president of university, our rector. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But I don't know the follow up of this. Maybe yeah. it's already registered to Satu or not. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Baden. Uh, I, I I don't know uh, the follow up of the yeah. this information because I already told the our presidents of university. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will ask again. It is it is already registered or not yet? Yes, yes. And so, so we can make, yeah, collaboration of this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you you have a lot of rice straw. So yeah. So I think that's the idea you 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 can have to 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 make it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And actually, this uh, cellulose is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, not, not only cellulose, lignin as well. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. In other hand, we already apply the kind of rice husk uh, for cellulose yes. in many yeah. many field of applications. Yeah, for yes. cosmetic, for medical applications, for mechanical, and you know, for energy as you know the, the cricket. I uh, <laughs> Yeah, for the energy sources. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, we give back to Dr. Aza to continue discussion. Thank you very much. Proceed. Okay, so we finish. Dr. Aza? Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> one more question for me, Professor. Sorry, Helen. Okay, can you hear my voice clearly? Now? Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry, my Okay, so actually, um, right now we are also developing the quantum dots for antibacterial properties. It's copper based. Uh huh. So we are really interested in your research regarding uh the uh, earlier you mentioned about the photosensitizer. Right? Yes. And you yes you modify the functional group and attach one photosensitizer. Yes. And may yes. I know what kind of photos that you are uh, using right now? Okay. We are using the... Uh, okay. In the previous one. The, the aldehyde group. 
the aldehyde. I, I will give you the, I will show you the aldehyde cellulose, take this one. I will leave it in the, uh, yeah. how can I type message? Oh, maybe you can click the chat box. Because the, the, the system is different. <laughs> Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay, here, here, here. Okay. Here is the dialdehyde cellulose nanocrease. Ah, oh, sorry, I just type type wrong. So the functional group is dialdehyde. Mm. Yeah. So mm. what kind of photosensitizer that you are using now? Oh, it's a it's a um you know edible um what can I say that. It's an edible thing. We call it. Uh, it's a one kind of uh, color elements. It's a. Uh, um, uh, I I will be forget. It's a. Uh, um, sorry. Let let me record. Uh, it's let me uh, Let me. Just give me like thirty seconds. Hey, sorry. Yeah, it is called the ah irrational thing. Irrational thing. It's an edible uh, element that we always normally add it to our uh, food. We call it in red or thin. I will show you this. So it's another um, biodegradable material. So all of our research are using the biodegradable or bio-friendly material. We call it in red or thin. Can you see that in the um, message? Uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, sorry, it's uh, type rule. Sorry. Your message direct to me. Yeah. <laughs> your message direct to me, brochure. Erase or sin. Sorry. Direct message to me. I think you should change the message to the. Ah, this is your private message. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. What, what can I private. do? The rest of things. Sorry, sorry. But, but it's okay. I can get it. So I, I, would you I please already, to, <laughs> to transfer to the <laughs> to the other? Okay. Yeah, sorry, this is okay. a private. Okay. okay. So what can I do? <laughs> okay, it's okay. I, I can get it. I can get it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I that's for thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Prof. Sheik, um, I have one more question regarding the copper. Sure, please. So, right now, what, uh, how you are using the copper in your, uh, how you combine the copper in your uh, biodegradable materials that you are developing now? You, you mean the absorption? And, uh, in the last slide, you said that you are interested in copper, ah. in copper materials. Oh, actually, yeah, so this. How, how you are going to use the copper in your materials? No, actually, this is a copper is, uh, you know, copper is widely used in the PCB, printed circuit board. Yeah. Yeah. So this yeah. copper is not for the nano nano structure copper. It's for the uh, copper plate that's used for the. Uh, uh, electric conductance in the uh, printed cir uh, boat, uh, printed circuit boat, because there's so many okay. types of copper that will influence, uh, actually the structure of the copper, copper will influence the uh, electric conductance. So I am very interested in to, to research in this uh, behavior because of the oh. next generation application, like a 5G or in the aerospace application, something like that. Oh, 
Oh. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay, thank you very, very much, Prof. Shi, for the nice lecture and the nice discussion. Yes. Any more questions from Dr. Sigit and other participants? Maybe there are still questions from the students. Ah, okay. One, students, yeah. One, one student, okay. Vira Yudatama. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the time. Okay, okay before please. that, um, Mama. yes, hello and good yes. morning. Uh, well, before I'm sorry that I cannot use my camera because there is a dark ambience here. I cannot use enough contrast so that my video a bit better. So I have to turn off. Sorry before that. Okay, so I want to ask about um, in the future. Okay, uh, from what I see, this is biodegradable material as uses are still uses as a coating or as a substitute. But I, in my country, I see that many, many students use this biodegradable as an opportunity for business, for instance, for packaging or even for other instance that might sound good, but in reality, this is not too reliable because sometimes they are stumbles across the high production cost and so on. Uh, so in what I want to ask is about the opinion of the professor. Uh, what do you think in the future that this biodegradable can almost substitute all for plastic or even more uh, complex thing like a metal? What opinion? What the opinion of your professor opinion about this? Okay, thank so uh, thank you for your question. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, yes. It's just very difficult to replace the plastic because plastic is so strong and the metal as well. So my, I try to make something different is that uh, just as the research about the, use the uh, cellulose as a filler. So we try to introduce this uh, material into the uh, plastic or the polymer based uh, uh, composites because you uh, introduce this uh, uh, high strength and high uh, sorry high specific strength and high specific stiffness filler into the plastic the bad thing is that we can reduce the, the usage of the plastic that's the first thing and the second thing actually we can use this uh, uh, material uh, as the uh, raw material uh, to replace the, the plastic. That's the next uh, next stage of development. So I think, uh, yes, the plastic and the metal and even the ceramic is so strong and so uh, good the, the properties, but uh, we can use this kind of material trying to, uh, you know, either enhance then the property so we can reduce the usage, uh, used um, amount of uh, uh, usage. And uh, I think for the plastic uh, replacement, we still have the chance, but maybe we, we have to make some, uh, you know, change to our uh, habits. Like uh, take the uh, straw, you know, if we want to drink in uh, the, we will have some drink. Normally we have some straw, straw. but right now the straw, um, mat uh, the material to make the straw, we, we have a lot of choice. Plastic is one thing, some biomaterial from the nature is another choice. So. I think, uh, but actually the property of, of the uh, biomaterial mat straw is not uh, as strong as the plastic one. So you have to drink it as fast as possible or the, the straw will damage or weaken. I think uh, maybe you have that experience. But uh, so if we want to use this kind of material uh, like a straw to drink the, the, the drink, to have the drink, so you have to uh, have it faster, okay? So, and then 
after drinking, you have to recycle this, and we can make this uh, material uh, go into the the circular uh, of the recy recycle. And think I, I think that's very important. So maybe it's difficult, but I still believe this uh, have uh, uh, some some space to work with. And the the, the um the final uh, no the optimal goal for me is to you know to save the no not to save to make the uh, earth better than now. So yep. I don't know is that that my re, uh, response is uh, is uh, is is to respond you to what what you want to know but uh, we we still working on that and we still have hope yeah something like that thank you thank you sir i think that's a uh, very enlightenment for me because i think that's still thing for the forward because uh I didn't look that way before, but now after hearing you, I still like, I can see the path now. Thank you. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Prof. She and also Fira. So that was a very good question. And like Professor, she said there is always a hope. So, uh, Prof. She said that if you have a stroke, something like that. And the fact that Indonesia have a lot of straw that are thrown away somewhere uh, without nothing. So in this, so this is your job to make it happen. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any more question? from the students or from the lecturer? Yeah, now I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> okay. 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 So thank you very much. So because we have no more question here, thank you very much, Prof. Xi. So if you have any more uh, more thing to say or some closure before we end this session. Yeah, I still want to visit yeah. you if we can. Okay. Yes, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So please join us at two. Then we yeah. have the funding. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah. visit to each other. Okay. okay. And Pramata, you too. Yeah. I hope yeah, you can come because, uh, yeah, I think that there's so many uh, similar part of Taiwan and Indonesia. Maybe we can have something really in common to to make our, uh, our research more, you know, more reasonable or more, um, you know, we, we, we try to make these things happen. Okay. Yeah, we are looking forward for that. We have abundance sources here in Indonesia. Yeah. If you need a straw, a, a very, maybe almost unlimited straw here every year in Indonesia, they just throw it away. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, some closing thank statement, you. Prof. Shi, for the students, for us. Any closing statement? Okay, see you, bye. Okay, okay good. Thank you okay, very much. Great. Thank you very much for Thank this you for the invitation. Session. Thank you. Thank Bye. you very much. I hope we can see. Oh, I can see you next for year. For your time. But this year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We hope so. We hope so. Yeah. See you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, we are Bye. Thank you. See you. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is the end of the session. Thank you very, very much, Proki, for oh, giving us leaving. a very inside perspective. Yeah, you can leave now. Thank you very much. And thank you for Dr. Sigit for the opportunity and also the students for participating. participating. So we can close. Dr. Sigit, do you have? Yeah, stay safe. Thank you, 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 Th